Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. In this lesson, we are going to learn al qawaid which is grammar, and our topic is al mubtada wa al khabar. And uh, before we can talk about this topic, we need to go back to the uh, information that we have learned previously, which is related the categories of word in Arabic. Categories of words. So al kalima, Arabic word, comes in three categories. The first one is called ism. Or noun ismun the second category is called fa'lun or verb fa'l and the third category is called harf or particles harf uh, basically in arabic if you want to write any sentence you can start with either ism you can start the sentence with uh, an ism or a fa'l or a harf but in this lesson we will only focus on how to start our sentence with an ism and the name of the sentence, yeah, the name of the sentence that we are going to learn, okay, whenever you start it with an isim, is called al jumlatu al ismiya, al jumla al ismiya, where the word jumla means sentence, and the word ismiya comes from the word isim just now, which is a nominal sentence or a sentence that starts with an isim. Uh, and in order to write a uh, correct jumlah ismiya, uh, you will need two parts in the sentence. Okay, you will need two parts, and this is what we are going to learn today. So the first part is called al mubtada. The first part of the sentence is called al mubtada, and the second part of the sentence is called al khabar. This is just the name, yeah, given to the parts of the jumlah. Al ismiya, al mubtada, and al khabar. So in this lesson, we are going to learn the basics of al mubtada and al khabar. So let us go to the lesson. Al qawaid, al mubtada, wal khabar. So what is mubtada and what is al khabar? Mubtada is the noun and the ism that you use to start your sentence. That is called the mubtada. So it is the noun that you use to start the to start the sentence or to start the jumlah so that is called the mubtada and what is the khabar al khabar so in this lesson it we are also uh, we will also use now yeah but in another level you will you will learn that you can also uh, use fi'l verb or also harf so but in this lesson it is only about noun so here the khabar is the noun that you use or that you write to complete the meaning of the sentence to complete the sentence so you cannot have a sentence with al mubtada only without the khabar or you cannot have a sentence with al khabar only then you need to have both parts al mubtada wa al khabar so let us look at the examples of al mubtada wa al khabar here we have two uh, columns the first one is for examples that involve muzakkar words and the second one uh, is for examples that involve mu'annas word for masculine words and also for feminine words. Let us look at the first sentence. Al-Jumla al-Ula, the first sentence is At-Talibu Salihun At-Talibu Salihun which means the student is good. At-Talib, the student Saleh, good. So if you look at the word Talib, this is the noun that you use to start your sentence. At-Talib. The, the student you want to talk about the talib therefore this is what we call as the mubtada or in english the word mubtada is translated as the subject so this is our mubtada so i just write meme yeah mubtada so you have written the mubtada at talib so what about the talib what do you want to tell us about the talib the talib is saleh the talib is saleh and saleh means good the talib the student is good so with the word saleh now the sentence is complete because the word saleh is the khabar. This is the khabar that completes the meaning of the sentence. So you have two parts. First is the mubtada which is at-talib and second saleh which is the khabar. That is our first example. Now we look at the next uh, example for the mu'annas. Sorry, this is a mistake. Yeah? This should be mu'annas. Okay, now we look at the mu'annas part. The mu'annas example is at Taliba, at Taliba tu, salihatun. 
So basically this is similar to the sentence that we have seen just now. At-talibu salihun but now it is taliba saliha which also means the student is good. But what is the difference between the first sentence, the first jumla and the second jumla? The first jumla is for male. So at-talibu this is referring to the male student saleh that he is good and the second sentence it is referring to the female student at-taliba and the khabar or the predicate is good as well saliha so what do you notice here okay if you look at the word the mubtada in the first sentence it is in muzakkar form yeah there is no ta at the end and the meaning is male so this is in muzakkar form so whenever the mubtada yeah the mubtada is in muzakkar form the khabar must be in muzakkar form as well that is why you don't see any ta at the end yeah talib saleh but what if our mubtada is a mu'annas word. So, in this case, taliba is a female student. And furthermore, you see a ta marbuta at the end. So, this is a mu'annas word. Look at the khabar. The khabar must match the mubtada. So, the word saleh, it, this is the muzakar version and the mu'annas version is salihatun. Now, uh, we go to the second example. The second example, huwa salihun. Huwa salihun. Huwa he saleh is good. He is good. And the next example is Hiya Salihatun. Hiya, she, Salihatun is good. So she is good. So if you look at the first word in both sentences, these are the domir that we have learned, yeah, the pronouns. And pronouns are considered as noun. So they are part of nouns. So huwa, this is also another isim, noun. And hiya is also another isim. And since this is the noun, the isim that is in the beginning of a sentence, we call it mobetada. So here is also mubtada, huwa is also mubtada. So uh, in order to make a sentence, you cannot only have mubtada, you need to have the khabar to complete the sentence. So the khabar here is saleh as well. Good. So you must, uh, as we have seen in the first example just now, uh, both words must be in the same gender. So this is muzakkar and saleh, the khabar must be in muzakkar form as well. And when the mubtada is mu'annas, the khabar must be in the mu'annas form. So we, we say, Huwa salihia saliha. We go to the third example. In the third example, now they use names such as Muhammad and Fatima. So Muhammad and Fatima, people's names, these are also noun, is it? So since, uh, so this is the same in, in the beginning of a sentence, we call it the mubtada as well. So mubtada, Muhammad, what about Muhammad? Muhammad is saleh. Muhammad is good. Muhammad is muzakkar. Saleh is also Muzakkar. And what about Fatima? Fatima is also good, but we don't say Saleh because Fatima is Mu'annas. Therefore, we have to say Fatima is Saliha. Fatima is good. So, this is our third example. If you look at the fourth example, the fourth example basically is similar to the previous example. The difference is that now we are having a combination of words. Yeah, it is not just one word like word, word Muhammad or Huwa or the word Talib. But now the word is Akhi. Akhi, which is my brother. So it is a combination of two words. So when you have combination of two words, you will always look at the first word. Okay, do not look at the second word because uh, the Mubtada is always the first word in the sentence. So in this case, even though they underline both words, but the actual Mubtada in this sentence is the word Akhun brother ah whose brother so the ya here is just to uh, to let us know whose brother is that or oh, this is my brother but your mubtada your subject is still the word ah therefore your khabar must match this word ah yeah so this is muzakkar therefore the khabar is also muzakkar akhi saleh my brother is good ukhti saliha so this is uh, this is also a combination the combination of the word Ukhtun and Ya. Ukht, which is sister, and Ya, which is my. So, the first word is the word Ukhtun. And the word Ukhtun, sister, this is a Mu'annas word. So, therefore, the Mubtada is Mu'annas. Yeah? Since the Mubtada is Mu'annas, you have to make sure that the Khabar must be in the Mu'annas form. That is why in the sentence it says Ukhti Saliha and not Ukhti Saleh. Right? So this yeah, my, it can be for male, it can be for female, yeah? but as I mentioned just now, we only focus on the first word. So brother, and this is sister. So that is why this is Salihah. 
and the last sentence this is also combination yeah this is also combination of words so here we have ibnul ustaz ibnul ustaz the son of the ustaz the ustaz's son the, the teacher's son the son of the teacher is saleh is good why is the mubtada is it what the first word ibnu or is it combination of the two words ibnul ustaz even though they underline the two words but actually the mubtada is only the first word the mubtada is always the first word <coughs> so the first word is ibnu so we are talking about the son we are not talking about the ustaz we are talking about the son so the son of the ustaz what about the son the son is saleh yeah the son is saleh so salehun here matches the word ibnu ibnu muzakkar saleh is also muzakkar but if you look at the muannas version bintu al ustaz saliha bintu al ustaz saliha again this is a combination of bint and ustaz the daughter of the ustaz so uh, since this is a combination we always look at the first word the first word is the word bint this is our mubtada not both words bintul ustaz yeah? it is always the first word only bin a mubtada the mubtada is now a muannas word this is now a muannas word so your khabar must be muannas as well bintul ustaz so what about the bint what about the daughter the daughter of the ustaz is good so since this word saleh or saliha is referring to the daughter that is why you see a ta marbuta uh, at the end of the word so to recap what we have learned in this topic is that whenever you write a sentence uh, starting with a noun then you need to have two parts yeah uh, in the sentence the first part is called al mubtada which is always the first noun and that you use to start the sentence and the second part is the khabar which is the word or the noun in this lesson it is about the noun that completes the sentence so here we have uh, and and what is the rule the rule says that if the mubtada is muzakkar then the khabar must be muzakkar but if the mubtada is muannas then your khabar must be muannas uh, let us look at the uh, exercise here it says imla al faragh fill in the faragh fill in the blank bi mubtada munasib with the mubtada uh, so what is the mubtada again the noun that you use to start the sentence so here you need to fill in the sentence with the mubtada min al qaima and they have already provided you with the words in the qaima in the list so what you need to do is just find uh, the word that matches the khabar so these are all the khabar you look at the gender if the khabar is muannas then the mubtada is muannas if the khabar is muzakkar then the mubtada is also muzakkar so for example number one jadida which means new jadida new but what is new so you need a mubtada so before you can add any of these you need to look at the gender so here jadida tun uh, muannas therefore this part must be muannas as well so from the list uh, which is muannas so we look at the words word one by one Mu'alimuna. These are combination of words. Mu'alimu, which is teacher, male teacher, and whose teacher? Na, our teacher, our male teacher. So, since this is a combination, you look at the first part of the word, which is mu'alim. Mu'alim is muzakkar. Of course, you cannot put it here because jadida is mu'anna. So, you need uh, another word. Look at the second example. Haqibatul um. Two words, combination of two words. So, as usual, we will look at the first word only, which is haqiba. The meaning is a bag. So whose bag is that? It is the bag of the mother, the mother's bag. So we are talking about the bag, not about the mother. So this is the mubtada. So can we you put the word hakiba in the sentence? Look at the gender. This is muannas. Hakiba is muannas. Then yes, you can put the word hakiba. Hakiba tul ummi jadi datun. The bag of the mother is new. The meaning is correct. The grammar is also correct. Okay. Now we go. Uh, to the next sentence Tawil 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 means long Tawil long Okay, but if you look at the word Tawil here This is a Muzakkar word So this part must be Muzakkar So long or tall It can be long, it can be tall So we go back to our lesson Mu'an, to, to our part here Mu'alimuna uh, Again, Mu'alimuna so This is Mu'alimu, Muzakkar Na is our so can this be the muzak can this be can this be the mubtada muallim so you can put it here muallimuna 
tawil. Ha, ya. Mu'allimuna tawil. Okay. In terms of the grammar, it is correct. But you have to look at the meaning. Is the meaning correct as well? Mu'allimuna tawil. Our teacher is tall. Yes, the meaning is also correct. So, you can use the word mu'allimuna in uh, this sentence. Let us see if you can use another word. So, we go down. And do you see any uh, muzakkar word? Haqiba. We have mentioned just now. This is mu'annas. Hiya. She. This is also mu'annas. Adarsu, ah, this is a muzakkar word. Adarsu, the lesson. So, can you put it here? Okay, uh, from the grammar point of view, yes, because this is muzakkar and this is also muzakkar, so you can put it here. But let us check the meaning. Adarsu, tawilun. The lesson is long. As I mentioned just now, tawil can be tall, can be long. So, the lesson is long. Ah, yes, the meaning is correct. So, the lesson is long, so the word darsu is also suitable to be in this sentence. We go to the third uh, sentence, mujtahid, which means hard working. So, hard working, mujtahid. But, again, look at the word. This is a muzakkar word. Yeah? Therefore, your mubtadat must be muzakkar. So, we go back to the to the list of word, muzakkar. So, we have muallim. Yes. Put it here. Muallimuna mujtahid. Our teacher is hard working. Yes. Grammar is correct. The meaning is also, also correct. So, muallimuna could be put here as well. We go down. This is Mu'annas. No. This is also Mu'annas. Okay. What about the, the last word? Ad-Darsu. Can you put it here? Ad-Darsu Mujtahid. From the grammar, grammar point of view, yes, it is correct. Mujtahid is Muzakkar. Dars is Muzakkar. But if you look at the meaning, uh, it is not correct. The lesson is hardworking. Of course, this cannot be the answer. The answer is only Mu'allimuna. And our last example, our, our last sentence, Mukhlisa. Mukhlisa means sincere. Okay. Somebody who is, uh, we say ikhlas. Ikhlas is sincerity. But this is mukhlis, the person who is sincere. Uh, you call him mukhlis. But here, you see the tamar buto. Now you know, this must be for mu'annas, for female. So we go back. For mu'annas, this is muzakkar. No. This is mu'annas, haqibatul um. But can you put it here? Look at the meaning. Haqibatul ummi mukhlisah. The back of the mother is sincere, of course. Again, it is the back, yeah? not the mother. So the back is sincere, of course. This is not correct. We go to the third word here. Ah, this is Mu'annas. Put it here. Hiya Mukhlisah. And the grammar is correct. And the meaning is also correct. Because here is she. So, she is sincere. Yeah. So, this is how you choose the correct Muqtada for the sentence.